This is a pivotal time of the season. Two weeks to the trade deadline and a new dynamic is in play. Now on this show, we think like a GM and GMs these days are transactional. Patience is not a virtue. But if everybody thinks they need to buy, it presents a very interesting opportunity for the few teams that decide to sell. Let's do a little digging in. First of all, I know it's year two of the new playoff system, but it's the first year of having seen that new playoff system. And the lessons of that new system? If you can get in, you can win. It's not totally random, but the National League last year featured the five and six seed in the league championship series. Three, I mean three 100-win teams got dropped in their first series last year. The Dodgers, Braves, and Mets. Teams cannot help but react to wildcard teams, even ones on the road, coming in hot and rattling the division champs. The lesson from last year, just get in. So, knowing that, take a look at this. These are the teams right now. There are only 10 teams that are more than seven games out of a playoff spot. That means you have 20 teams that think they're making a push for the playoffs or getting in the playoffs. These are the sellers, right? The prime sellers. Some of these clubs, A's, Rockies, Royals, I mean, the teams at the bottom, look, they know they're out of it. There's no conundrum here. They don't have big choices to make. They don't have big time assets. Not that many sellers. These are all the clubs that are more than seven games out of a playoff spot. So this creates a seller's market. The Cardinals, White Sox, Mets, Cubs. I mean, I'm not saying they all should blow it up, but somebody will have an opportunity to cash in fairly well. Let's start with St. Louis. I know it hurts, but they have two aging aircraft carriers. They're bulky, they're expensive, and you know what? Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado, look at the numbers. They're still hitting. Here's what they wrote on their contracts. Arenado has five years, including this year, 144 million left. Paul Goldschmidt has two years, 52 million left. Both guys, though, are still crushing it. They're attractive out there. Arenado's 32, Goldschmidt's 35. The Cards have a stockpile of younger position players. I'm not saying they have to, but I'm saying there's an opportunity here to use these two big weapons that would get big attention out on the market. Look, you can go in small and get back small. You can go in big and get a bumper crop. This is about facing reality. The Cardinals are 13 below 500. The White Sox are 15 below 500. The time to cling to your core is over. So let's talk White Sox. This group is in year two of underperforming, and it's getting worse. So yes, keep Luis Robert, superstar 25. But they seem to want to cling to Dylan Cease and Eloy Jimenez. And I'm just saying, if I'm an opposing GM, and you say, those two guys are available, you have my full attention. Cease is not having a great year, but he showed a high ceiling last year, a 2.20 ERA. He has two more years of arbitration coming, two years before he hits the free agent market. Eloy Jimenez has yet to blossom, and he's had trouble staying on the field. He hasn't topped 90 games played since his rookie year, but he's slugging 463 in a bad year, and he's also top 20 in baseball in average exit velocity. He's only 26. He's on a contract extension. He has four years, 59 million left, including two team options. So those two came over in the same deal in a heist from the Cubs for Jose Quintana. You package those two, you're getting something back very real in return. I know it hurts, but you have to give to get. Speaking of the Cubs, like the Mets and the Padres, they should be better, but they're not. They have a positive run differential, but they're also six games under 500. Obviously, Marcus Stroman is the pick of the litter. He's 32. He's got a sparkling 2.88 ERA. But what are the Cubs doing with Cody Bellinger? Their bet on his redemption worked, but it's probably working a bit too well. They have a mutual option, one year, 12.5 million. Bellinger's hitting 301, he's slugging 524. He's gone. Unless you start talking extension with this guy, he is not part of your next playoff team. Now to save time, <clears throat> I'm not going into the Mets and Padres in depth. I don't think either wants to blow it up. It would be a seismic slap back after their off seasons. It might happen. Neither club has been able to go on a run. We'll talk about that. but. They're a show unto themselves. But one team is not on our board that has to face facts. And yep, it's this guy. And I know it's difficult to do it in the real world. It's painful for the Angels to deal Shohei Otani. And to be realistic, he is a straight short-term rental. However, I'm talking about teams that are prepping to play tournament baseball. Remember that, the lessons of tournament baseball last year? And there has never been a single player that could impact a playoff series like Shohei Otani. 
in a five game series he could start twice maybe start once close out a game and he's currently the best hitter in the sport. There's never been anything like this. He's a tournament monster and the sport is now about tournament baseball.